And if you're not getting sued for saying what you mean and meaning what you say, your ass must be really fucking sore from sitting on that fucking fence. This is why we opted for castration at the door. Oi, 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 yeah boy. There's no coming back from that one, shit cunt. No refunds. You're just gonna have to accept it. Uh, so we have here a court case, um, San Diego, Dave Wolf, back in 2011, still going on. It's still ongoing. Uh, received a summons for that court case back in mm, 20, don't know, 2012 maybe. Still ongoing because I haven't heard any formal um, information that it's finished. So it's a seven year court case with a multi-millionaire still going on. Uh, the court case two years ago with Kayla and Toby, that fought, they were $46 million uh, that was resolved pretty quickly. That was finished, finalised. Got a new one now, apparently. I'm not sure the, the exact details. That one, no one's ever contacted me there. So, but they 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 usually take a few years. And and one of my friends who's Jewish, uh, recently said to me, Harley, why do rich Jewish fan? <laughs> he says, fat Jewish rich people, fat Jewish rich people. Now I'm not trying to be offensive. That's, my Jewish friend said that, so I think it's okay to say that. I don't even, even know what the word Jew means or that religion or what, I don't, I'm pretty ignorant to that. I'm more of a just a, who are you versus what do you look like, so stuff like that. Anyway, so my Jewish friend said that you have some sort of pattern of fat, rich, Jewish kids seeing it. We had Dave Wolf, Dr. Evil, etc. And I'm just thinking, what is it? Why do the millionaires want to sue me? Like, what, what is the attraction? It's fucking hilarious. So in 2011, uh, David Wolf. In 2006, actually, I went to a, a retreat with Doug Graham, and there was a girl there, quite an attractive, a girl with old, old thing attractive was there, and she had a massive headache. She woke up, she was sort of unconscious a bit, and she went to a Dave Wolf party the night before, and she's like, I can't remember anything that happens. She goes, I think I had sex, so I was I can't remember that. And she goes, I think I, I think we had sex with Dave Wolf or something, and but she couldn't really remember. And she sort of felt a bit uneasy. She goes, I don't even know if he's a fucking creep. I don't even, I wouldn't go there though, but I don't know. Anyway, so I didn't really think much of it. I was like, what? And then a few years later, I met this guy called Sky Dancer, who I think he might still be in prison for dealing ecstasy. Yeah, he went for JFK airport, like 50 kilos of fucking MDMA or some bullshit amount. And he got put in prison and he was Dave Wolf's sidekick. And so I heard that Dave Wolf and the co used to allegedly uh, spike girls drinks with MDMA and date rate drugs and the, the justification was that for that was to expand their heart chakra aka drug them, exploit them, fuck them because normally the, when they're straight those girls would tell you to fuck off you fat creep bag anyway but that so I mentioned that on my website at the time 30 miles a day on YouTube etc and Mr. Wolf uh, took me to Superior Court or Supreme Court, whatever it's called, in San Diego. And I was, in, I was in San Diego last year, and I was waiting for a tap on the shoulder, Mr. Johnstone, you know, you uh, come this way, sir. I was waiting for that immigration. I've been to the US in 2011, uh, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2016, and nothing's ever happened. So maybe I think it's still ongoing, still ongoing. So maybe if we can make it rain on that one make it speed up a bit. But that's what happens in court. You know, people try and charge you or the, they're usually very wealthy. They're usually fat, rich kids with not much better ways to spend daddy's money than making lives hard for other people. But, you know, I don't take it personally because I've been through court. And when you can, I, I, I've, got to, I've got to say, if I could ever see Kayla and Toby again, I would thank them for putting me through that because it did make me a better person. It did, um, did make me understand how the word, world works better. You can't learn that in university. You have to be sued by steroid head, aggressive people with fucking making it rain. Toby doesn't make it rain, man. That dude could make it fucking tornado. Dude's worth 46 million bucks. He's like 23, 24, recently got arrested with charged with steroid use, allegedly, in, a, in court again. That dude can make it fucking rain. So, you know, I've got a little bit of respect somehow. It sounds weird, but not respect. It would be gratitude for the respect for his, like, how he's played the system and made it spin it to win it. Respect there, not respect for the program they recommend. 
but gratitude for put me through that process because it made me a tougher person you know it makes you a tougher person when you step in the ring when I step in the ring in sparring here in Thailand Muay Thai and there's a fat dude in there and I'm fucking punching him as hard as I can in the guts it's not even doing nothing because he's got all that jab of the gut protection he's got the Joe Beast protection it's like you know you learn you're like whoa I'm gonna do headshots you know, if it was a street fight, I've got to fucking hit him in the groin or take out the knees. Because punch him in the gut. If you're lean, you punch him in the gut, you can pop their rear or wind him. But an obese person, boom, it's jab with the gut. It's, not, it's like you punch it into a bag, nothing's happening. They're just like, is that all you got? So you have to have opponents in life that really fucking put you to the line. And people shy away from that. People shy away from that. I mean, when I, I admit, when I first started bike races, I used to look on the, on the registration form who signed up. I looked for an easy race. And then when I got a bit more mature, I'm like, I want, look, I want a hard race. I want the best riders in Adelaide to be there. I want this to really be a test. And can I finish, can I place, what can I do? Because if you, if you win a race and it didn't have to do, work hard for it, it's like, eh. It was the, the best ride on the day crashes or the favorite crashes. And so it's like, eh. Or if the weather was really sunny and it was really nice and we just cruised the line and we attacked the last climb and it was all good, eh. It's not as memorable as like crashing and having shitty weather and a sore knee and you're chain skipping and all sorts of shit. I remember I won a bike race and I put my fucking cassette on the wrong way. The gears would jump around all the time, but I won it because it was, I won it anyway. It's a climbing race, but I just felt so good that I just overcame the situation. I remember it more. So you don't want to steer away from getting sued in life, you know, put in prison if it's what you really believe in, you know. If you can avoid it, your life, your call, your choices. But I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm not afraid of any system if I'm telling the truth. What, what am I afraid of then? Well, I'm afraid of people not understanding what I'm trying to say. And that, I guess that comes from, not from fear of rejection, because I have no fear of rejection, because I accept myself. I would say that communication, for me, is a, probably the biggest thing in my life, is quality of communication. So, what, so people can understand what the fuck is my intention. Because if you want to help someone, my, my, my highest drive in life is contribution. But you can't contribute to someone if they think you're trying to scam, you're trying to scam you, or if you're some fucking, if they think you're some, some crazy weirdo dude, they can't go like, whoa, what's what's going on here? This is weird. So my biggest fear is people not understanding what my intention is, and then missing out on the goal I'm trying to help them achieve. And for me, it's veganism. I want to fucking veganize the fucking planet, man. I, don't, I understand it's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. If you want proof, just look out and go to the shopping mall. You know, go on the vegan community online, look how much fucking bickering there is. How much do they, everyone's just chasing some more money and start, I'm like, oh, no. it's never going to happen. I live in that delusion. I do have that mental health issue, if you call it. I'm so paranoid schizophrenic that I really think that the world would be vegan. That, that could be a new medical health, mental health uh, category. Veganic or veganetic. Um, or Vigentia. <laughs> Forgetting the world is run by fucking meat, military, money, militia. That's Vigentia, where you forget that actually happens. And you're Vigentia. You forget that the world's not vegan yet. It's Vigentia. It's not dementia, it's Vigentia. So I am, I am a, I do suffer from Vigentia. I am a veganic. And I understand that people fucking don't understand what my reality is. And that is a big battle I have every hour of the day. Every video I upload, I'm like, the people understand what I'm trying to get at? You know, and I, that is, there's a great book to read called The Four Agreements. And it covers, I read it back in 2001. Uh, a friend Paul Reed gave it to me. It's a great book. Simple, easy to read book. Grab a copy, get a PDF, just read it. And you get from bookshops, second hand for 50 cents probably. Four Agreements is based on don't take things personally. Avoid making assumptions and always do your best and always keep your word. So if you make a promise, keep it. If you're gonna do something, give it your best shot. Your best shot's gonna vary. Sometimes you feel a bit sick, sometimes you feel a bit dehydrated on the car, you can't do it. always give your best. The best is relative. Don't make assumptions. Making assumptions is like if someone gives you rude service on the phone, you're like, oh what a fucking cunt. Maybe they should better shit their pants, they gotta get off the phone, explode in the toilet, you know? Don't make assumptions, avoid making assumptions. Another one is don't take things personally. Again, person's on the phone, oh, they, they were rude to me because, you know, I, I wasn't spending that much money. Again, they're fucking about to shit their pants, they gotta get off the phone, or they gotta get out, out of their sales room, you know, they, they probably fucking shit their pants already. And they're thinking, can you smell the diarrhea in my pants right now? I gotta get out of here. 
So don't make assumptions, avoid taking things personally, always do your best and do your best to keep your word. So I would say, I would, uh, you know, this whole lawsuits where I get sued, it's, it's always gonna happen. You know, until I die, and even when I'm dead, someone will try and sue me because they saw one of my YouTube videos that's still rolling around the internet. Oh, this guy said that, I'm gonna fucking sue him. Oh, he's dead. Oh, well, we can sue Figsy then. You know, and sue his bikes. His bike, my bikes will still be on the planet. You can sue one of my fucking bikes, take it to court. Um, I had to edit that out because what I just said then wasn't appropriate for YouTube. I might have get sued again. No, the video probably get deleted if I said that. So, but you just got to roll with it, man. Don't live in fear. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. I've always got lawsuits, man. I've always got haters. I've always got fans. You know, I've always got money going in or going out. I've always got sore legs or great legs. You know, I've always got a bike. Sometimes the tires are flat, sometimes they're not. You know, I've always got energy. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's still alive. As long as you're alive, you're gonna have fucking problems. And people's biggest problem in life, listen to this, people's biggest problem in life is thinking they shouldn't have any problems. Think about it. This party started! Yeah. Yeah.